Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu today arrived in Australia following his two-day visit to Singapore. This marks the first ever official visit of a sitting Israeli Prime Minister to Australia. And joining me today to discuss the implications is Nathan Jeffe, the Israel correspondent for the Australian Jewish News. Thank you so much for joining us. Pleasure. All right, so I think the big question on everybody's minds about this visit is why did it take so long for a sitting Israeli PM to make it to Australia? Well, the simple answer is that it's so far away and prime ministers tend to be busy people. Um, but there have been attempts to have some official Israeli visits in recent years. Mr. Netanyahu was actually meant to visit in 2014. And then there was the Gaza conflict. Uh, Victor Lieberman was also supposed to visit in the same year. And uh, Reuven Rivlin, the president, was meant to visit last year and ended up going to Russia instead to talk about some of the regional instability. So that's why it's taken so long. But I think there was a major push to make this actually happen this year because it's the 100th anniversary of the Battle of Beersheba in which Australian forces were key in um, basically causing that turnaround in the First World War which paved the way for the British taking control of what was then Palestine and really paved the way to the establishment of the Jewish state. So there's that, that very kind of historic connection which I think made the Israelis determine that it would actually happen this year. Well, and I mean, there are going to be a lot of Australians coming to Israel for this ceremony that's going to be taking place very soon, correct? We can Indeed. talk about that a little later. Um, but, you know, I think also we, we'd like to know what do you think Israel and Australia are going to cooperate the most on? What are the main topics of discussion during this meeting, whether that's technology, water? A lot of the strategic and regional concerns are the same. Uh, although Australia is in a situation where it understands that bigger powers are taking care of many of these things, but the interest in Israeli technology is really significant and really genuine. We have a situation where when Australians enthuse about Israeli technology, this is not just lip service, this is a country that's basically readjusting after a major mining boom and is trying to move away from that kind of heavy industry looking for new directions and looking at Israel and really being wowed by Israeli technology. Last week was the R Crowd Summit in Jerusalem, recruiting investors for Israeli technology. And this R Crowd company, which is crowdsourcing funding for startups, 20% of its funding is coming from Australia. That's an it's indication yeah. of the kind of interest. Also, there were two major visits Last year, the uh, Premier of New South Wales visited and the Foreign Minister of Australia visited as well. Both of them, I was following both of those figures around and the conversation all the time was Israeli technology. I went with them to meetings at Hebrew University, genuine, genuine interest there and genuine just wow factor by what's going on in Israel. So that's a very central. So I guess the final question for you is what is next for Israel and Australia? So Australia is seen as a good and loyal friend of Israel, uh, that's for sure. And the body language and the conversation has been very warm so far during the trip. There is strong condemnation from Australia of the United Nations um, for the language with which it condemned settlements late last year. There is some friction over the settlement issue, but Australia is really seen as the kind of friend that Israel wants to have at the moment, one which is gently pushing Israel towards the two-state solution, but at the same time not saying that settlements are the only obstacle and giving a lot of moral support to Jerusalem. Great. Well, thank you so much for coming in and kind of informing us a little bit more about what is taking place uh, with Israeli-Australian uh, foreign relations. And you mentioned this earlier, you didn't say that right now in our interview, but there may soon be a direct flight between Australia and Israel. And if that's the case, I'll be on the next one. <laughs>